welcome you guys to Launch and Elevate Online Week 2. And we are so excited to have you guys. My name is Reed Epps. I am the Elevate Junior High Pastor. And I'm Maddie Koenig. I am the 6th grade coordinator. That's right. And we're so excited. We've got some great stuff for a sermon and worship. But before we get to all that stuff this morning, we want to kick us off with some game time for you guys. So, Maddie. We have a fun game today. It is called the Logo, Logo Quiz. Quiz. So Reed Sorry. and I are going to be competing against each other in who can guess the logo that does not have the name on it. And so Reed and I are going to be competing in this. Personally, I would like to redeem myself because last week if you tuned in, you saw us compete in Are You Smarter Than a Middle Schooler? And it was so close, y'all. was in the lead and right at the end, I forgot the word with and with the and Reed <laughs> swoop in and he stole my point and he won. So I would like to redeem myself this week with the logo quiz. So what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a logo coming up on the screen for you guys to see and Reed and I will be seeing that same logo and we are gonna try to guess um, what that is. Whoever raises their hand first gets the first shot at guessing the logo. You ready Reed? Oh. Going for 2-0 and oh against... 2-0? Oh, I don't think Sunderland. so. I'm going to win this one. I'm pretty confident. Okay, let's go. Round number one. First logo. Amazon. Oh, Amazon. <laughs> oh, okay. That was that was, that was was quick. Okay, I, I need to get my reflexes up. Oh, we are oh. <laughs> You ready for logo? All right, we're ready for logo two. Logo two. Woo. Disney Channel. Oh, yeah. One one. Okay, I redeem myself. All right, okay, ready number for th round three. Round three. Let's go. UPS. Oh. That was quick. Okay. So round four. Let's go. Come on, Emma. Subway. Yes. No, oh. it's not. Seven Eleven. Uh. Seven Up. Sprite. Yes. <laughs> That was so close. <laughs> There's so Why many options. Why did I say Subway? It's the same color. Okay. Oh, baby. Okay. Wait, is this the last one? Come on. Come, okay. <laughs> Next round, let's go. Texans. <laughs> oh, that's fair. I only moved here a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> we got a Chicago. Okay. Right. Next round, let's go. Oh, baby. Loves. Uh, <gasps> Southwest? <laughs> yes! Oh. oh, wait, wait, what's the score? Uh, three to three, I think. I think it's three to three. Yeah, okay. Three, three. Let's go. Three, three to three. three. How many do we have left? Oh, baby. It's getting intense. Four more. Okay, we'll see. Oh, yeah, ten. We'll okay, see. let's go. <laughs> Next round. I hop! Oh, yes! No. Four, three, four, three. Let's go! Let's so go! Oh, okay, next game. Pringles! Oh, Pringles! Four. Oh, my voice got so loud! <laughs> what was that? that? Pringles! Like last week, oh, this is really, <laughs> this is this is really good. Okay, let's oh, go. Man. All right, I'm two more. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Chevy. No. Oh. Never mind. Why I did know. I say Chevy? I don't. <laughs> Chevy. Is it Levi? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Levi. That's what I meant. I don't know why Chevy came. Up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Last one. Oh, so wait, man. I have five. Reed I has four. four. We have one left. Two. Two left. Okay, two. Ooh, okay, let's go. If you win this one, then you win. No, because there has to be tiebreaker. Let's go. Pizza Hut. Boom! It is five. Pizza. Five. Pizza. Okay, let's go. Last one. Come I on, believe. baby. Okay, two and those. Let's do it. And we see! Yeah! Nice. I have redeemed myself. No! We are 1-1 one, one for launch and elevate online games. Read one last week. I won this week. That was a fun one. I like that. <laughs> Read is obviously upset. I hope you guys got to play along at home and that you knew some of them as well. If you got any of those faster than Read or I, I would love to know because I felt like we were pretty speedy Good there. Game, Good game. Okay, it is now time for worship. So let's head over with the Point Break Band. to me when the silence steals my voice you understand me you understand 
Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one you could ever see. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Your heart and lead me in your love to those 
of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you It's holy, it's holy There is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those around me Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love To those around me I will build my life upon your love It is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken I will build my life Upon your love It is a firm foundation I will put my trust In you alone And I will not be shaken Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. God, you are so good. God, today help us to put our lives on you, God, to build our lives on the solid rock that will not fall. In the midst of uncertainty, God, you are our certainty. Your love for us is certain. Your power is certain, God. So I just pray that you will give us the peace, hope, and comfort uh, and faith to, to put our lives on you, God, and to build our lives on you. Amen. Well, hey, you guys, me and Maddie, I guess I should say Maddie and I, we are so excited for what God has planned for us as we get to study through the book of Acts this summer. Uh, The book of Acts, man, it is such a tremendous book of the Bible, and I know me and Maddie have loved it because it really helps 
all of us see and understand how the early church came to be and how God's Spirit is alive and it's churning inside those who are yearning and are loving Him, who are looking for Him. And so we're going to get to go through some great stuff uh, through the book of Acts. We're going to get to go through 10 points actually through the book of Acts. And I hope that you guys get some great takeaways um, as we get to hear from a bunch of preachers this summer uh, that have some great stuff ahead for y'all to learn through the book of Acts. And so this week we are getting to start our study of the book of Acts in chapter 2. And I want to give you guys just a little bit of context of where we are finding ourselves um, in the Bible and up to this point. And so where we find ourselves and what's happening up to this point is we have just finished the book of Luke and and uh, Jesus has just risen himself up from the from the dead and uh, he's actually spending time with his disciples up to this point. He's, he's spending as much time as he can uh, where he's teaching them, he's uh, showing them, you know, what is to come and he's also telling them that, hey guys, in the future, in just a few days, um, what is going to come to be is I'm actually going to ascend back up to heaven uh, with God the Father, and I'm actually going to leave my earthly being um, to actually go into heaven and be with the Father. Um, and so it is on you guys to continue my journey, uh, continue my journey, continue my mission and my ministry um, that I have left you here with. And so uh, we are now here in Acts where at the beginning in Acts 1, uh, Jesus ascends into heaven. And now in Acts 2, it has been about 10 days since God has ascended back into heaven. And the disciples are wondering, okay, what is our next steps, guys? We're, we're getting together for our next steps, uh, wondering when God is going to uh, send his Holy Spirit, which is what he tells them actually in Acts 1 as well, uh, that he is going to send uh, his Holy Spirit to them so that he can help and assist them in continuing his ministry. And so we're going to read through Acts 2 verses 1 through 4 today. And so let me read for us real quick. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they were staying. They saw tongues like fire, like flames of fire that separated and rested on each one of them. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And so today I want us to take a look at uh, at the Holy Spirit in this passage. And I want us to see how God uses His Spirit to awaken His people in a very creative way, uh, but also has a goal of reaching all nations and pointing the glory back to Him, ultimately back to the Father. And so the first point of the Holy Spirit I want us to look at is that the work of the Holy Spirit, it is a creative work. And we have to be ready uh, at all times for God to bring His Spirit into our lives um, Thankfully for us believers, we have had His Spirit fill us up and has come into our lives, but um, His Spirit works in very creative ways. And so I want us to take a quick look um, at actually Genesis. Genesis 1, 1 through 2, that says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And so there he is, the Holy Spirit present in the first two verses of Scripture. God's creative spirit is the Holy Spirit. And the picture in Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 2, is that of, I think, of a mother hen. You know, you think of a mother hen who has these chicks. Um, she hatches some chicks. And what is she doing? She's patiently waiting and sitting over her chicks. She's hovering over them, uh, giving them life, protecting them. She's guiding them. Uh, and she's nurturing them. And, and God's creative spirit, that's the same purpose. It, it brings something from nothing and then it sits on it like a mother hen until all of, crea uh, all of creation is hatched, we're newly formed, and we're alive for Christ. And so this actually makes me, uh, it, it, thinks, it makes me think of a movie called Glory Road. And I don't know if any of you guys have seen Glory Road, but uh, the movie Glory Road, every time I watch it, I actually watched it last week with my wife, and it actually made me cry another time. I cry almost every time I watch this movie because it is a very inspirational movie, um, but it, it is so cool to me to see how uh, this movie is all about basketball, and it shows this basketball journey of this team uh, going through the difficulties uh, as well as the victories of uh, a, a season in sports. And so 
In Glory Road, uh, the movie is centered around this coach. His name is Don Haskins, and he begins his journey in the movie by coaching a high school girls basketball team, and he does really well with his girls basketball team, but then actually a team uh, called Texas Western College out in El Paso, Texas, they actually recruit Don to come coach their basketball team. Well, Don's super excited about this opportunity, but he comes to find out when he comes to Texas Western that their basketball program is as much as nothing, basically. They don't have a basketball program up at Texas Western. And so what Don has to do is he has to build this program from the ground up. And that's exactly what Don does, is he builds this program with a few teammates and a few uh, people that he recruits to come play basketball for him uh, that he finds all across the country. He goes from east to west across the country to find these people, um, and he is ready to win ball games. He knows that teams like Kentucky, Duke, Virginia, they have dominated basketball, but Don, all he cares about is getting his team on the court and having them perform his style of basketball. And so he puts this team on the court, he invests in them, and he puts everything he's got into this team. We, we get to see this journey of a hard journey, but a very rewarding journey as Don in his first year as Texas Western's basketball coach, he takes the team from basically nothing to a 23 and one season. And he takes them all the way actually to the national championship where they play against the powerhouse program, Kentucky at the time. And Don and his team, they go on and win against Kentucky. They win the national championship. Um, and at this point in the movie, um, I always tell my wife, I hear the soundtrack actually they play from Remember the Titans and it brings the tears every time I watch it. But it is so cool to see that moment when they win the huge national championship and to see how much Don has invested into his players. He's developed them, he's guided them to victory, um, and he continues to patiently protect them, guide them, and teach them over time, just as God's Holy Spirit does to us. He protects us, he guides us all throughout our lives. Um, and so I want us to see that, that God's Spirit is creative, but it is ready to invade um, and ready to change our lives and protect us and guide us and uh, use us in different ways. And so the second point I want to us to see about God's Holy, um, God's Holy Spirit in this is that God, uh, God's Holy Spirit and God have a plan for all the nations. And it's not just for a select few nations. And so as I was studying through this portion of Acts 2, I never got to read it to you, but it goes on actually to talk about how um, people from all over the nations came to see these people as they uh, spoke in, a, in, in all their languages. Everybody could understand everybody, and it was all towards the glory of God. And what's cool is that uh, there's so many different people across the nations in this point of history, and now they are able to see through these people speaking uh, in tongues, actually, um, but they're able to see as people are speaking and professing God's glory uh, to know that God is, is all. He is everything that we need, and now they have the ability to go back to their nation and speak of God's glory, His gospel, and uh, to share it with all the nations. And so to see that and to see them return home, we know that the point of all of this and to the point of God sending His Holy Spirit and professing it to everybody is that God's plan is no longer to be bottled up with the Jews. It's no longer to be bottled up in this one section of people. It's now meant to spread to everybody across the nations. And we know John proclaims later in the Bible, he says that Jesus, you know, he purchased God with his blood. Men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And we know that we cannot rest until all the nations have heard the good news about Christ. And his Holy Spirit has ignited that to begin to happen here in these few verses. And the last thing I want us to come away with from this passage on God's Holy Spirit is that God's Holy Spirit provides and helps us know that the goal of God's plan is that He will be glorified among the nations. You know, these Jews from all these nations heard the disciples speaking of the mighty deeds of God uh, in, this, in this chapter. And then we see later, actually in the chapter, if you want to continue reading after this, Peter actually goes on to give a sermon that talks about God's, the gospel, and he actually comes to convert 3,000 souls to Christ in this chapter. And that is the ultimate goal of the gospel. It's to bring glory to God. 
in Revelation, as John goes on later in the Bible, he talks about having a vision of the nations worshiping before God's throne and giving all praise and glory to God. And that should be our vision as well. We should give glory everywhere we go to God. And even though some of these people uh, may have not taken, uh, take this uh, miracle uh, quite seriously, or maybe said, you know, oh my gosh, like they're weird, like I don't wanna listen to that. Or it says later, it says, but some sneered and said they're drunk on wine as they speak. We know that some people may not take this in, may not, may not take the great news, but we know that at the end of times, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is our savior. And that should be our purpose that we should just share with anybody. It does not matter what our response is. We know the truth and we know that God has come to save us and that God has everything good for us. And so in conclusion that I have for us today is I want us to close out with you guys knowing that God's purpose at Pentecost it was to equip his church. It was to equip his church with the mighty power of the Holy Spirit being sent down to his disciples so that we would be his witnesses to all the nations resulting in his eternal glory. And I want you guys to know that this was not just towards the disciples. His Holy Spirit can invade you now today. His Holy Spirit can come and wash upon you and you're able to come into the family of God. And I pray that we are all part of the family of God already, but if you are not yet, I pray that you would come um, in all honesty and ask God, you know, I need you, Lord. I need your spirit. I need, I need you to invade me and to change my life for the good. And so I wanna ask you guys a few quick questions as we finish our time with this morning. And this is the first question I wanna ask you is, is my focus on God's glory in all things? And then two is, is my daily life cons consciously dependent on the Holy Spirit? And third one is, is my daily desire to bear witness of Christ to those who are lost and possibly perishing, guys? We, we want to be witnesses of Christ, and so I'm asking you guys, where in your life may you need to give out all you have from what God has given you? So I hope you guys have learned so much from Acts 2. It has been great to get to hear about God's Holy Spirit and how creative it is to invade into our lives and to work in such awesome ways. Um, and I hope you guys come away with that the Holy Spirit, it's powerful guys, and it's ready to work in our lives. Thank you for that awesome word read on the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit comes into our life to point others towards Christ. Y'all, I thank you so much for joining us again for another week of Launch and Elevate Online. Y'all, if you weren't able to join us for daily last week, you can jump in tomorrow. Head to faithbridge.org slash FSM summer to find out all of our information of how to get plugged in during the week. And we hope to see you next week for another great week of Launch and Elevate Online.